Hey everybody, it's Rob from Lackeys Be Trippin' and uh, I'm here today at a racetrack, actually Road Atlanta. We just finished up uh, a trackside weekend. We have our new to us yet dilapidated 1998 American tradition behind us. She looks rough, but, but we're gonna clean that up soon. Anyway, here I have our friend's Fusion fifth wheel RV. And uh, they were our neighbors for the weekend, obviously, but they're having generator issues, hence the reason for this video. They have, you might've guessed it, a Cummins Onan QG5500, and uh, it, it will not stay running. So let me show you what it's doing. So first thing, obviously we're going to, uh, we're gonna prime it. Now, if you're familiar with our adventures on Lackey's Be Trippin', you will know that uh, we had a QG5500 in our last rig, our Thor Outlaw, and uh, we had a lot of issues with it. And I did a lot of things to our QG5500 to make it run very reliably. So uh, I, I fancy myself a bit of a, uh, of a home-taught expert on the QG5500. Anyway, let's try and fire it up here, see what happens. I'm gonna hold the start button. So you can see, the flashing light tells us that it is running, yes, obviously, but it's not making power. When the light is flashing, it says we're not making power. And you can hear that it's it's off, it's not running well. Now, my friend did install new spark plugs on this. Um, he kind of did a tune-up of sorts, but we're going to go through it a step further. We'll check the air filter first. Brand new. Brand new air filter, obviously. So you can hear. So it's like backfiring, chugging. There we go. All right, guys, I had some time to diagnose this generator a little bit more. And what I did was I figured out that um, I could get it running with some little tweaks. I adjusted the altitude knob. It was actually at the wrong setting. And so that got it running a little bit better and smoother, but the idle was still kind of fluctuating a little bit. That told me that the generator uh, was having trouble regulating its speed because maybe it didn't know how fast it was going. On top of that, once I shut it off, I did get a fault. So what happens when you get a fault on these own ends? You're gonna get three flashing lights, flash, flash, flash on the red, and then pause, another flash, flash, flash. If you click the stop prime once, it's going to read out a fault. So in this case, it was flash, 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 four flashes, slight pause, then five flashes, then a longer pause. That was a code 45. And what 45 is, is it's a, it's a speed code. It says that the generator is not running at the right speed. So no matter how I adjusted it here, if I idled it up or anything, it still would not produce power. So what was happening is while the generator is running, not only is it fluctuating in, in the engine speed, but this red light on the start switch was just flashing. So instead of being solid as it normally would when it's outputting power, it's just flashing. And when that happens, that tells you that this generator is not generating power. It's just running for no reason. So I needed to figure out why that was the case. And the first step in that is here. If you look over the breakers and the start switch, you'll see what looks like a silver beehive back there. It's kind of hard to, to see here, but it looks like a, a silver beehive. And there's a 10 millimeter screw and they're inside going into that uh, beehive, for lack of a better term, um, you're, you're going to see this. There's gonna be a couple wires and so it's going to be turned like this. A couple wires, and you have a 10 mil here. And when you remove that, you can pull this, this brush block out from the armature. And this is what you're going to see. Now, obviously, one of these is broken. You want them both to look like this, not like that. So hopefully, this broken brush block did not do any other damage inside. Uh, the armature, you know, and that sort of thing. We can just put a brush block in. Grover and Kim should be able to get one of these locally tomorrow uh, when Cummins opens and hopefully that'll get them going. Anyway, 
this is just one thing, <laughs> another issue that I have found with these things. This is the first time I've ever seen a broken brush block. I never encountered that on our personal generator, but I did have a lot of other issues. And I'm going to uh, show you guys that in a future video very soon, by the way. I have all that footage compiled. But I do want to talk about one thing that you can do. This is a hack that I'm going to do on Grover and Kim's while I have it open. And I'll describe it in my next video as well. This fuel line goes from the fuel pump, which is located here under the generator. And obviously it comes up behind the cover of the front cover of the generator and it goes to the carburetor to the float bowl okay uh, this area gets very very hot and i actually used an infrared temp gun and i found out that aside from the exhaust down here aside from that area this is the hottest area of the generator and obviously the fuel line running there is a problem what happens these are notorious for shutting down when the weather heats up you've got high loads on them you're running air conditioners the cover is over this, you've got the door shut, everything, it's getting hot in there and they shut down. What's happening is your fuel is boiling and it's actually evaporating as it comes into this area here of the fuel line. So just this area, it, got, it gets so hot and that fuel turns to vapor inside the fuel line and then it pushes the liquid fuel back down to the pump. So if you ever have your, Q, your QG5500, if it stalls and you go to prime it and you can hear it and it sounds like there's air in the system, that is a very distinct sound. It's a very, like you can hear it, right? And then once the line fills with fuel and the float bowl fills with fuel, that, that buzzing noise quiet sound goes, and you can hear it. You can actually hear the liquid going. You like these sounds? So I have a microphone for here that, so you can get these ASMR sounds from Rob. Uh, anyway. That's what this sounds like. And so what you need to do is put a, um, you need to put a sleeve, a reflective sleeve over this line. And you can buy it at O'Reilly's or AutoZone. Yeah, it's like a foil line. Take the fuel line off and wrap that all the way down. If you do that, you would be shocked. You will be shocked how much that reduces fuel boiling, vapor lock in this engine. It's absolutely awesome. So that's what goes on there. But for Grover and Kim, we're going to get that brush block replaced. Grover did a full service on this engine trying to diagnose it. So it should be healthy for a while. Um, like I said, hopefully there's no other damage. But stay tuned. We'll have our follow-up video to this with all of the other things that I replaced and the, pre the uh, preventative maintenance and additions that I made on our generator that uh, helped it run more reliably. But I literally have hundreds of hours in making this thing run right in our outlaw. So... Uh, I'm happy to share those hacks with you because I'm positive you are going to have issues if you haven't already with this generator. Okay, thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it. Hopefully this video helped you out. If it didn't, or if you have something else going on, please put it in the comments. I don't have all the answers, but maybe somebody else here will. Please be sure to like this video if it helped you, or even if it was just entertaining. Uh, subscribe to the channel, click the bell for notifications. We've got not just this type of stuff, but also a lot of travel information. And as you can see, our new RV needs a lot of repairs, and we're going to be documenting that and sharing that process with you as well. So thank you guys. See you in the next video.